Uh, called to order our meeting for Wednesday, October 16th. Commissioner Saldemeyer. Vice Chair Harris. Present. Chair Waymeyer. Present. Commissioner Dunn. Present. Commissioner Dickinson. Present. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our invocation. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. I want to pray the prayer that the Lord taught us in his Sermon on the Mount. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Correspondence and organizational business. First of which is an update on the Bad Astra bike race event. Good morning. You Jeremiah Walters? Yes, sir. Welcome. Uh, yeah, my name is Jeremiah Walters. I want to thank you again for having me today and also thank you for the sponsorship that you guys uh, provided for us. Um, we had 152 uh, sign up this year. Our numbers were down a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you have the... Uh, documentation in front of you. Um, we did have, uh, we are partnering with Garmin, which is kind of cool. Um, they pay for 100% of their employee, or they in the past they've paid 100% of their employees' entry fees to our races. Uh, they've changed that this year to 50%. So that was uh, part of the reason why our numbers were a little bit down this year. Uh, we are looking at some sponsorships for next year um, to where we would be able to offer a monetary prize, which will inevitably pull more people <laughs> Um, more serious people. Um, of the 152 uh, cyclists that came into town, um, most of them were doing the 50 mile version of the race, which we affectionately call the Half Astra. Um, that one seems to be loved quite a bit. At least the t-shirt is loved quite a bit. Um, but as you may, I, I don't know if you also know this or not, but over 75% of our participants were actually from outside of Franklin County. Um, we've had, in the past, we've had from all over uh, the United States. This year we had Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri, I uh, Ohio, Indiana, and Iowa. But uh, we used uh, your funds to uh, hire a more professional photographer because while well, iPhones ha take great pictures, having an actual camera uh, and stuff like that takes, they know what they're doing and I don't. That's, that's the reality of it. Um, and then also to run uh, more ads through our social media. And, uh, we actually had several people that told us that they found us, uh, even the people from, there was a family from Iowa and one from Indiana, and they said they found us through those ads, which is really awesome. But, yeah, so we're hoping to continue to grow that. And um, Looking at other events that are around, what would be an appreciable prize amount that would likely increase? Prize it? amount? Yeah, okay. we talked about a, having a prize would maybe increase interest in a different group. Um, well, Kansas um, has actually the, the world's largest gravel race. I don't know if you know that I'm one. Poor, yeah, yeah. That's ten thousand dollars. I'm not. I'm not about to to try to compete with that. Um, but that's also five. They bring over five thousand cyclists to Emporia every year, which is crazy. Um, we're looking at possibly like three, three to five hundred dollars. Um, but then if we would scale it for the first, second, and third place, but we would only do it also for the hundred mile uh, course. Um, we've had the same guy win the last four years. He's a, he works for Garmin, but he's also has some sponsorships. Um, he's a very strong rider, but yeah, <clears throat> give him some more competition. What is your goal? Uh, we would love to grow this to where we're annually bringing in about 500. Mm. Um, that's what we would love to do. When we first started talking to uh, the city in, two, or in 2020, um, obviously there was COVID things that we were, mm -hmm. you know, walking through at that point in time as well. So that kind of changed some of the things. And at the time, like we were told 250 would be probably the max. Things have obviously changed since then. Um, but if we could grow up to about 500, that makes it to where it's also um, something where it's bringing in enough finances for um, even myself and uh, Josh Giambalvo is my business partner with this um, to make it uh, – 
to where it's not a strain financially and it's mm -hmm. actually something that's that's bringing in um, positive for us like we we love being able to partner with not lost brewing um corner market provides coffee for us in the morning uh, mugshot approached me this last year and was asking if they could uh, be part of it next year as well um obviously most of our um not most of all of our t-shirts and everything else goes through david cox with uh, front row sports and things like that so we love being able to support like local businesses and uh, things like that with bringing in more people to ride um, and to eat afterwards so it's big enough where it's a lot of work it's some risk it's uh it takes a lot of your time but it's it does. not quite that next step where it's, there's the re re return that right it uh it, it economy it, of scale maybe you after know. we also don't charge what other races charge most races um, in the in this type of I guess gravel race um, will be hundred plus hundred twenty five dollars or something like that for entry fee. Uh, we had talked when we started this. We wanted to make this accessible to more riders, and so we've kept it under hundred dollars for the last four years. And we said we'd do that for at least five years. But uh, yeah, well, please stay in touch. I think it'd be interested in helping you get to that next step. Yeah, we would love to do that. Uh, I mean, the end goal, yeah, five hundred or maybe not end goal, um, but trying to hit 300 at some point in time. We were pretty close to 200 last year. And then with just some of the things that went on this year with Garmin and things like that, we didn't, we had fewer numbers, not that bad though. It was only 18 less than last year, but. Yeah, well, I we told won. the bike shop that as they grow, you're gonna just have to learn to ask for help. Yeah, Because absolutely. people in this community will help. <clears throat> so absolutely. you just need to be able, just just tell yourself, I need to reach out. I need more help than I got. Yep, so. and Main, Main Street has also reached out and is wanting me to work with them as well to get more involvement of Main Street Association, all those things as well. So, cool. yeah, we're hoping to grow that. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. All right, thanks. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Second item under correspondence and organizational business is consider approval of the donation requests for the West Franklin Elementary School for the <coughs> annual Veterans Day meal. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is Cassie Bozarth, and I am the principal at West Franklin at Williamsburg this year. And I'm kind of new to this arena because um, this is my first year being the principal there. But we host a Veterans Day meal every year, and we both elementaries come together to do a program K through five, so all of the kids are involved. And in the past, you guys have generously donated to help us fund that luncheon. And so we again are here asking um, for your generous donation of $200 to help us feed the veterans that day. All right. How many veterans uh, typically show up for that? Um, I think the number was between 25 and 30 last year. Um, and I can get those numbers to you guys after we have the meal as well. All right. It's, was it two hundred last year, Janet? I believe so. Is there a point at one a point that we need to raise it to a little? I mean, I, the cost of food and everything yeah. is more. I mean, I don't know. I believe that last year it was raised. I believe the year before the years before that it was one hundred and fifty, okay. and so last year we so raised we it did up 200? to two hundred. Okay. But I appreciate that. <laughs> is there a motion to approve the two hundred dollar donation? I'll make that motion. All right, is there a second? Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Third item is to issue proclamation formally designating October 2024 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Good morning. Come on down. <laughs> All right. My name is Maggie Bornhold, and I'm the Assistant Director of Rural Services at the Willow Domestic Violence Center. <clears throat> and I just want to thank the commission and the community for the support of the Willow and for helping us serve domestic violence survivors. Um, as we know, domestic violence is um, a pretty significantly high crimes against person in at least Ottawa and probably the, the entire county. So we're very cognizant of that and I'm happy to be back in Ottawa and serving this community. Glad you're here. Thank you. No. Um, I know we have a proclamation. You read do. Uh, would, would you, you like, like to read it or we can or what? Uh... Um, whatever you'd like to do. I think typically the mayor reads it into the record or the chair reads it into the record. So you, yeah, but, I'll go ahead and go read for it. it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Proclamation 2408 in the county state of Franklin in the county state of Franklin County, Kansas, in recognition of critical work being done by domestic violence advocates and allies in service of the survivors and victims they serve, we encourage all citizens to actively engage in the scheduled activities and events sponsored by the Willow Domestic Violence Center and other organizations working towards the eradication of domestic violence. Whereas in the United States, more than 12 million adults experience domestic violence annually, with an average of 20 people every minute experiencing these heinous acts. Whereas in the state of Kansas, one domestic violence incident occurs every 24 minutes, and one domestic violence murder occurs every 10 days, with one domestic violence incident reported every 23 minutes. Whereas the impact of domestic violence is felt not only by individuals and families, but also by communities and the nation as a whole. Whereas the Franklin County joins with others across the state and nationwide in supporting domestic violence victims and survivors, the advocates and the organizations who serve them, and holding offenders accountable in our community. Therefore, be it resolved that the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners formally designates October 2024 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Wow. And we have the proclamation right here. We need a motion and a second to approve. I will move to accept the Proclamation. All right, is there a second? Second. Those numbers are kind of scary. I was like, you know, I was like, those aren't national numbers. Those are Kansas numbers. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we consider it a public health crisis. Um, and we, we try to address it that way because we serve not only survivors of physical violence, but also psychological, emotional, financial is big, um, and other types of, of domestic violence. So, um, I think a lot of the times those numbers just include the physical, so they're probably actually a lot more, plus whatever goes unreported. Yes, that's so right. we, we, we take it very seriously, and we appreciate your support. Oh, thank you. We'll still call the question. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. And we have a cop for you to take this one. <clears throat> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Do we have public comment? Yes, we do. All right. Uh, citizen desire to speak on an item, not on the agenda. We do so at this time. Discussion is limited to five, minute, five minutes. The commission will not take action or discuss items at this time. Discussion should be limited to matters of county commission business and public comment is not permitted in regards to personnel matters or on pending legal matters. Good morning. Good morning, I'm David Reeves uh, from the Power of the Past. I live at 2226 Idaho, Williamsburg. Just wanted to give you all a little update from our Power of the Past tractor show. This year we had a national show, it was the Massey Expo in North America, and uh, we had great participation. I mean, we had uh, states of Illinois, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Texas, Indiana, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and then we had some from British Columbia and Ontario, Canada. Uh, the boy from Ontario, he said he had pulled his tractor 1,257 miles down here, so uh, he's pretty dedicated. And uh, But I tell you, we appreciate you guys. Uh, you give us free dumping. Uh, the Visitor Center grant helps us promote our show. That's what we use the money for, mainly is advertising. And uh, your Visitor Center uh, volunteers, they do up our exhibitor bags for us. Uh, we give them all the stuff and uh, they stuff them. And uh, this year we had, uh, I think it was 353 tractors that came and they came from all over. But uh, we had the best we can figure because the only way we can really tell on our head count is from the wristbands and then we take our uh, exhibitors and vendors and figure they had at least two people per place and uh, we had close to 5,500 people this year. Wow. 
And so uh, it was it was a great show. Uh, next year we'll be featuring Oliver's and may not be as big a show, but uh, we'll still put it on and have a good time. You had great weather. Yeah, we had we had real good weather this year. Couldn't ask for better. <laughs> and uh, as you guys know, we put up a new shelter house down there in the park. And uh, we had a member that passed away, left us some money. We used that, and we the Gibson Foundation donated ten thousand dollars to us. So we got a nice shelter. It's all, it's nice, and uh, we had a lot of comments on it. So uh, want to thank everybody and thank you all for helping us out this year. So thank you. Great, great show. Derek, I, while I've got David up here, a couple things I want to bring up. He's not only the leader for the tractor show, but he's also one of our leaders in, within the blade department. There's a rumor going around that he's going to try to retire. No rumor. <laughs> His word is, so um, I want to thank him. He's not going to allow me to do much for him in a few weeks or months whenever he, when he makes this fatal mistake. But... Uh, <laughs> Um, I just want to thank David publicly for the work that he's done for us. He's a heck of a blade guy, and he's made the guys around him a whole lot better. We've used him as a trainer for the last um, 10 years, and, and so if you don't like what you're seeing, it's his fault, and he's leaving anyway. <laughs> thank you. I told, him he, I told him he can come back to my and do my road like every quarter. <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind. Yeah, just, thank you. Chocolate chip cookies involved. <laughs> Very good. Need to pull up the consent agenda. Consent agenda today includes meeting minutes from October 9th and claim vouchers in the amount of one million twenty-six thousand five hundred eighty-two dollars sixty-six cents. Is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Commissioner Dickinson. Yeah. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner Dunn. Yes. Chair Weimer. Yes. First item of business is to discuss a replacement vehicle for the appraiser's office. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Commissioners. This is a continuation of last week. Mm -hmm. um, I have located a couple of vehicles, and it's a trade off either way. Um, we can go with uh, uh, older, higher mileage. Um, cheaper or we can get something that's going to be within the last couple of years that's lower mileage and, and a little more expensive. Um, I, either, either option is, is fine for me. We can, we can certainly make it work and get our, get our mission, get our tasks completed. But uh, I, I would prefer the, uh, the newer one just so that we can get theoretically a few more years out of it than we would for the other one. So um, all I... I just ask for your approval on on one or the other, or or neither. Both are at Victory here in Ottawa. Yes, both are at Victory here in Ottawa. Yes. And and to be clear, when Jamie came to me with this, he just had the Cherokee, um, and I asked him to, given that it's got over eighty thousand miles on it, to go look for another option. Um, so I I do believe that he would be happy with either. Um, and we can go back to the drawing board if you would like, but either of these costs are, um, uh, we can do it easily within our capital outlay fund. And do you know roughly how many miles a year you put, you'll put put on this vehicle? You know, maybe 7,500 probably. I mean, it's, it's mostly local miles that we do, but then we have an occasional trip to Topeka or Wichita for meetings. But um, I looked at it like I would look at buying my own car. And I'm, I'm really, I'll, I'll tell you what I told Derek, is I'm really cheap and I don't have ego about my vehicle. I just need to get back and forth, so. Um, you ever need a four-wheel drive? Yes, and, and we do have one already. But uh, we. One to four-wheel drive, the other's yeah. two-wheel drive. Yes, this one is, yeah. Um, we, we do have one in the department right now and uh, if we need to uh, if we need to do that we do have that option um, we don't need it often but when we do we, 
we need it. But we try to stay out, stay off the the stay off the roads when it's when it gets that bad. Personally, I'm cheap also when I buy. It's ideal everybody knew, but the last vehicle I bought was was fairly new, but it had some miles on it. And two weeks later, it was in a hailstorm. <laughs> and when I replaced it, I actually decided to go with less miles mm -hmm. and pay the extra. And I am so glad that I did. Mm -hmm. um, I really think you you will get that much more out of it. So I I would absolutely had no problem going with the, the higher. It's still not new, yeah. and you aren't paying new prices, and that's good. So. Everyone else in favor of the 23 yeah. model? 23 or 17, you have a preference, Joe? Roy? No, do I have a preference? No. No? Okay. Was well, there a motion to approve the purchase of the 2023 uh, GMC from Victory, Ottawa for $26,420? I'd make that motion. All right, is there a second? Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Baymeyer? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. All right, we need to look at purchasing some tires. Jeff? Yeah, um, I just have on in front of you today the consideration to approve the bids for the, the, the lowest bid was the pump. Pumps tires in a total amount of twenty three thousand nine hundred nine dollars and sixty nine cents of three three bids. So that would get us caught up on our tire inventory. Hi, Colt, I know we've talked about this before, and and obviously new public works director now. Would the five of you prefer that something like a tire bid go on the consent agenda? I mean, it's twenty five thousand dollars, but it is so routine that not significant. But we're it's not going to tell him not to buy tires. That's exactly yeah. Right. So, commodity you have to have. I mean, okay. yeah. Did you have any uh, issues getting uh, bids? I don't believe. I don't believe so. Um, that's something Kirk typically does, and he didn't indicate. I know sometimes we have difficulty getting specific to tire from tire to tire, but I don't believe in this case. I, I know we will. A good response. Yeah, right. I think it was an equal response. Right, is there a motion to approve uh, the? Tire bid from Pomps Tire in the amount of $23,909.69. No move. Okay. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Our third item is to declare various items as surplus. Yeah, I came and spoke with you last week briefly about some of those items uh, those uh, along with the uh, the items that were turned in by it are on the on the bid sheet that was turned in last week and then janet uh, just handed you the ones that were turned in to us that would be the ambulance department through uh christy hilliker and then uh brenda fitzenmeyer and we've got those things loaded well we've got brenda's loaded and to our shop to be sold um one thing that i did speak with you guys briefly on was that we talked to, to gavel roads they were to be here yesterday to uh, take inventory and they did not show mm -hmm. so if there's something that you want to change and you want to uh, me to consider or want me to reach out to uh, purple wave i'd be more than willing to do so but that would be up to to the they contact you at all he did not but i wasn't here yesterday but i had I'd got no emails and got no phone number from him so he probably just forgot i know they're very busy but uh, I think that takes us off the hook from my contact with them if we want to go elsewhere. I was going to say we can uh, declare them surplus either way and then give you the latitude to. Correct. Could have been an innocent, you know, Correct. mistake. You could have talked to somebody and you right. just haven't found out yet. So. Okay. Um, I suppose a motion would look something if everybody's okay with the items we've been given. They're. Uh, out. I don't think anything in there comes close to. Uh, doubt on being the uh, end of its life. So Again, Colt, I talked to you guys last week. There's a few things we will replace, but I will get those on in front of you guys before we actually do it. Gotcha. Air compressor, a few of those items that we need, probably a, s a shoulder spreader. Small small ticket items, and, and relatively speaking. All right. We'll make a motion for to, to accept the three sheets that we got, the surplus equipment. All right, and then allow the public works director to dispose of them uh, uh, to an auction site of his uh, preference. Okay. So be it. Yep. 
Sorry. Second. Oh, go ahead. Commissioner Dickinson? Yeah. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Waymire? Yes. All right. And our fourth item of business is to consider a lease agreement for this building between the county and the Elizabeth Layton Center. Yeah, thanks, Colt. This is something we've discussed off and on for some time now. Um, Elizabeth Layton would like to rent Suite 3 on this half of the building. Um, they've been through the space. We've uh, had extensive communication regarding this lease. They've already executed their portion. To be clear, it does not include this conference room on the other side of the wall which is, that's okay. I mean, we could potentially find some use for that space regardless, but I think this is a good deal. It's the exact same lease that we used um, with Advent Health. It's got that 2% escalator automatically built in. So um, yeah, I will answer any questions that you have. Does this include the little office on back? So that either, neither one, okay. Any questions? Is there a motion to approve the lease between Franklin County and the Elizabeth Layton Center? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. Staff report. Derek. I don't believe I have anything today, Cole. Paul? Morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, just want to express my appreciation to the uh, Franklin County staff. We had a really successful uh, Franklin County Career Day yesterday, or last week at the Ottawa High School with the uh, school districts participating. We always get great uh, participation from the county departments and staff. Uh, we had, uh, I think, 46 different tables representing different career pathways or college pathways, military pathways. Um, but we had a number of tables uh, from different departments at the county and just want to express my appreciation uh, for that support. So happy to answer any questions other than that. I, Paul, I do want to point out that, and, and this is not unusual for you, um, but Paul is currently um, attending um, uh, board meetings in the small towns trying to drum up interest in projects to submit through Sharice Davids for federal funding and, and really appreciate that. I mean, those folks in those towns, understandably, they don't know where to begin right. when it comes to mm -hmm. finding grant funds and would be completely lost without you. I believe you were just down in Lane, correct? Yeah, I've been in Lane and uh, Pomona and have conversations uh, just this morning with Richmond, so trying to get the word out. and see if there's a common project that we can submit through uh, Sharice's office for appropriations funding. So we'll see where it goes, but uh, yeah. And that may need to be technically submitted through the county if we're able to come up with a project, but, but gosh, I would be more than happy. I mean, as much legwork as Paul doing, um, would be more than happy to help facilitate that. So hopefully we can mm -hmm. drum up some, because I, I will say this about Cherie, she seems to be eager to yeah. help out those small communities. So yeah, yeah. Because we talk about budget items or anything, any business we have to do with the small communities, you know, $10,000 is Don't almost an insurmountable mm -hmm. amount of money to them. And um, that's more than a lot of them's um, levied tax budget for the year. Yeah. So I mean, it's crazy to think that. Think about the costs with the infrastructure and reinvesting. I mean, hopefully, if you suppose you can get some kind of victory, that's a generational. I mean, yeah. you're not pushing just a huge debt, a huge uh, burden to the next uh, next generation. So. Yeah, and what we're trying to do um, with this one is, at the least, get the technical assistance funding. So, in other words, be able to pay for the engineering work for each of the communities, because that's the first hurdle. It's kind of what we've dealt with in, in Princeton on their stormwater. And now we've got an appropriations for actual doing the work in Princeton, or hoping it comes through, but kind of the same model, except trying to bring all the smaller communities together with a single project. I think that helps uh, justify it to Sharice that it's a, not just one community, but a, a number of smaller communities that, like Janet says, just don't have the resources to do it. So we'll see where it goes. We routinely see large urban areas get these kind of grants and this kind of money, but yeah. I, I've never heard of any. And Sharice has been good about 
supporting the rural district, rural part of her district. So hopefully we'll, we get a positive outcome, but we'll see where it goes. Hopefully they can get their share. Yep. I do appreciate your reports in public, but I did also re very much appreciate your written report that, that we're receiving. And it's, it's so much easier to remember and put in your head when, you know, <laughs> when it's, it's there. Writing. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, I know it takes time to put that all on paper, but do it. thank you for that. I appreciate the support I get from the county very, very much. Couldn't do it without you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anything from the appraiser's office? No. no. Sheriff? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um, this last weekend, we, uh, we made it through another Faith and Blue weekend. Um, I think uh, Commissioner Dixon, uh, sure. It was uh, what had a couple of our uh, events that we had. Um, it was attended pretty well by um, our staff, and then um, the, the various churches that are involved in that. There was there were more of those that were that collaborated together uh, this year, and it's a successful in our eyes. That's a successful thing because the idea is to get people communicating and working together um, for for a common good, and so that that happened, and uh, we we appreciated that. The other thing I really want to talk about is that um, um, this week we've had a couple um, pursuit situations that were kind of high profile, and uh, I just wanted to uh, publicly say how much I appreciate the, uh, the cooperation and the relationships that we have with our other area law enforcement. Um, one, the one in particular um, in the early hours uh, a couple of days ago was um, started in Coffee County. Um, but when you have a vehicle doing 100 miles an hour northbound in the southbound lanes of the interstate, um, that creates a very, very hazardous situation. And uh, all of our staff um, and those from the other agencies were knew that, recognized that, and they were out there um, to, you know, just try to save lives. And uh, and they, it was we were successful in that. Um, but it's it's a risky thing to throw spike strips out. Um, especially to be in the dark and vehicles like that are swerving at them and things and uh, but our guys do that because they know that if they don't um, somebody's going to get killed and so um, I just wanted to say that uh, commend our staff and and the relationship with our other agencies for for the work they do because they are out there in, to make sure that they're saving lives and making things safer for everybody in the community. So appreciate the work that they did and um, can't do that without the support from you guys. And so we very much appreciate that. So I would answer any questions you may have for me. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff. Yeah, just a few things briefly. Um, the shoulder work is basically and the paint is really all we've got left out on old 50. They completed the asphalt work last week. Um, I've been communicating with Derek about our numbers. Um, we, we ran under on rock. We ran under on uh, several of the things that we attempted to do to try to alleviate some of the financial burden. Um, however, we, we did come a little long in the tooth on some of the asphalt numbers. I don't have those specifically today. Derek and I are going to go for a ride, I think, today and look at some of those things, but I'll try to get those numbers to you. It doesn't actually have to be completed until the 25th, and they are ahead of their deadline. So I should uh, I, I should have the asphalt numbers computed. I just don't have the labor costs uh, and all the things that we've done to assist in them. But uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the fact of what our folks did to try to make this uh, a successful project as well as uh, some of the things that we did that really made it a better driving surface or roadway for the community so I, I and all all things said and done I think it's going to be a, a very good thing for our community yeah, uh, we'll, before you segue and and we will get the actual numbers to the commissioners obviously but my understanding is while there is an asphalt overage we also added a little bit to the project in we did. terms of aprons and we did. some if, stuff on Eisenhower. Correct. So we're actually getting something for that money. Correct? Absolutely, and I appreciate you bringing that up. We we did those expansions. There was an, an inch and a quarter overlay on those, basically a mile that we did that were on the two curves, one west of Williamsburg, one there at, uh, at a, um, Ransomville. So that was an overrun. 
we also put in front of you and we discussed putting two aprons um, on and that is going to be a big safety benefit for that that stretch mm -hmm. we also um, did the asphalt work in, on eisenhower that was 475 feet additional run our in-house folks did all the work they just put another inch and a quarter on it. So all those things will make it a better project because we did it. it the, we ran along because we asked them to do certain things, but that extra help really will make that a, a project stand out. It, it won't just be the road per se, it's the things around the road and the improvements we made for the entire road itself. So thank you for bringing that up. We've got a pretty good idea on what that number is. I'll, I'll hold off a week, um, but if it's anywhere near what we think, I'm really happy. Yeah. It, it's not a big overage in the grander scheme of things, and the fact that we um, made it, in my opinion, a much better, much safer, I think we added to the longevity, potentially, of the roads. We did. I, yeah. I think we made good choices. Yeah, I appreciate that. One thing that's not even, that we haven't even discussed, but I want you to know, there was three locations in that four-mile stretch that the concrete didn't push back so we had to cut out some of those spots and therein lies a lot of the under overrun that we weren't even anticipating um i mean we wanted to do it right we didn't want the road to have freeze and thaw issues and wrinkles through it um so we we did we did that extra work and that's really what you're going to see as the overrunners those three or four locations where we had to improve the concrete mill down and the extra cost there. We so, got into this project knowing, knowing that yeah, there, be, uh, yeah. there was going to be some. We didn't know and opportunities to, to make it better. And a absolutely. All things said and done with all the surprises that we had and the amount of work that was done, I, I really couldn't, like Derek, I don't think we could have done it better. And I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think it could be a, a better project and a better service for the community with what we did with the dollars. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> transferring um, we we had somebody come out the other day and we had some issues with the scales out at the transfer station um, we had we hired uh, Prouty to come out and try to blow out some of the scales in that process uh, there was a pinched wire we had to shut the, the uh, we had to shut the uh, transfer station down briefly yesterday afternoon in order to resolve some of those issues. We are back up and running. I know uh, that was taken care of by people other than me, and I want to thank Derek and Peg for both getting that back up online. Um, we have contacted the person who actually has installed that unit, and they're going to come back and do some service work and some more repairs on it for us. But it was down briefly yesterday afternoon, and we're back up and running again. We will probably have some more expenditures in, in the near future to get some wiring issues. I believe it was a pod on one end that had some pinched wires and they're beyond, they're gonna be replaced. So um, just wanted you to be aware of that. Peg kept the commercial haulers up and going. She did. Not. Yeah, she did. Sent them to co-op to Correct. work on their scales. Right. That there was, fantastic. yeah, we never missed really a beat as far as, uh, we may have lost a little bit of resource money on what we were dumping ourselves but we we, we didn't shut the down this this the uh, the actual scales were down and they handled it in-house um the paint crews called me yesterday for our uh work that they're going to be doing on the chip seal um, they're actually in osage county today they ran out of paint so they came and stole some yellow from us yesterday but they are going to start friday and work all weekend to get our 24 miles, and that will be inclusive of the 12 miles on old 50. That won't be what we have on the four, uh, that, but that's got to be done by the 24th, 25th as well. So um, that will be happening this weekend. And then I don't know how many of you have heard about the railroad closure of 68 Highway. I have worked with the railroad so long, not very successful in getting things done uh, at a local level. Uh, when they put the signs up, I contacted three or four different rail line supervisors, superintendents, the safety guy, wanting them to do something about the traffic uh, that was going to be going around on Georgia and Osborne. Um, their detours are set up only on state highways. So anybody that wants to take the detour on 68 Highway needs to go back to the roundabout at, at, uh, at Linden to I-35 and then back to to I, to, uh, to Ottawa. That restricts everybody in Fasher, Quintermo, Pomona, 
anybody that was, so they all go that route around that. We've been out there for the last two days and today putting uh, water down for the traffic. Thank we had a couple near misses on Monday. I've done this before with the railroad and sent in a bill. It usually takes a year better for us to be reimbursed, but for public safety, it's really the only thing that we have and only leverage that we have in hopes that they uh, do it. I've, I've told them several times, this happens about annually, if they would, it really could, they just need either chip seal it or they need to, they, they just can't make traffic go 10 miles out away and uh, it becomes a real hazard. And you know how dry we've been. So we've got both water trucks up and running as we speak during the hours and we will, we will bill all that to the railroad in hopes to be reimbursed. Um, I think that's all the fun I have. Right. Any questions? Uh, you've been tasked with the uh, getting rid of all the surplus. How are you, how are you gonna do that? Well, we will reach out to one of those vendors. Um, and the, the reason that we've used gravel roads in the past is because I can contact them, they take care of all the legwork, and then they write us a check. We don't have to deal with the citizens or the people that are purchasing it all. Purple Way will come get the information, and then they rely upon us to get the information out and to the people that want to look or inspect at the items. So it's a little less legwork if we use gravel roads, but again, I think we make a little bit more money if we use Purple Wave. So we have gathered all the items, we just put stickers on which department they go to, and then we sell it to the highest bidder, and then we set up three days where they can come pick it up. That's how we've typically done it in the past. So we have everything rounded up. There's a few items that will have to be picked up in Wellsville that are Christie's, and there's a few items that have to be picked up at the that need to be covered that are, will come out of the uh, IT department because they're electrical, mostly computer stuff. That railroad uh, detour is supposed to be done on Friday? It's supposed to be done on Friday. I do appreciate you putting that water out because I've heard stories. Yeah. You know, if they had to do it at the very driest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, we have no, no real control of that. I know there's a lot of people that it affects in the houses that I, I, I know, but there's probably 2,000 cars a day going around that gravel road and I, I can't close it. Um, it, it people don't just know how to drive on gravel, gravel, go slow. Yeah, I, I, would rec I would recommend to people that there is a sign in Pomona, if you can think about taking Labette on in, that would probably help yeah, you. Absolutely. Same thing if you're gonna go that direction, if you wanna go around our chip seal road, that will help you. But remember, they're painting it this weekend. <laughs> oh, so. that's true. Okay. Uh, today's advanced ballot day. We're expecting to send a little over 600 ballots out the door today, um, and we'll have more each day um, going forward. So I'm um, still trying to finish up everyone's voter registrations. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of last minute voter registrations. Um, and then we will start early voting on Monday. We have a lot of early voting hours. Um, and so we put those out on our website. So they're there. Um, Joanna's trying to help me get those out on social media. So everyone's aware of those. But um, definitely check the website for early voting hours. We have four nights till seven o'clock. We have two Saturdays. So um, we're offering a lot of extra hours to make sure everybody gets their time to to vote early if they want to, but we're not starting that till Monday the 21st. So next Monday you can vote early. All right, Commissioner Shrug. I have nothing. Everything. I had a couple of chamber events. I had last Friday, they had a chamber coffee at Bob Allen Ford. Um, you know, they continue to be a, a good partner for the, the city and the county. Uh, last, last night there was a chamber after hours at Ottawa Elks. And I think I learned, I learned about that more about the Elks than I ever knew before that they really are more of a service organization than I realized that they were. Um, but it was, that was a nice group that gathered that day. And I did go to a couple of the Faith and Blue events this weekend. It's always good to be able to interact with our sheriff's departments when it's not a crisis or, you know, but uh, the way they interact with the community, I was very proud of them. So um, appreciated that event. And, you know, just to bring the, the churches and, and our first responders together, uh, we all should be supporting our first responders and our, so appreciate seeing that happen in this community. That's all I got. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? All right. All in favor? Aye.
that copy this weekend or on Friday is at ORC on 15th.